All right, guys, so right here is a PC I've managed to build for 50 bucks, all right? It's a small form factor PC, so, yeah, let's go and see how well it performs in, well, you know, the benchmarks and stuff, but first off, let's go and roll the intro. Alright, okay, so, how did I manage to get this PC for free? Well, you see here, um, one of my family members was throwing out PCs again, because, you know, my family just likes to throw out PCs. I mean, at this point, it's just kind of normal on this channel. But anyways, so, basically, they're throwing it out, and so, you know, you know the whole routine I get from them. Basically, I ended up with it, alright? So, what happens next? Well, what I do is I just basically, like, you know, put an SSD in there and see how well it performs. And with its Intel HD graphics, which I will look in, in a different video, but not this video. Yeah, it didn't perform that great. So what I did was, after buying that 20 buck SSD for it, I also spent another 30 bucks on an R7450. I know it doesn't sound like a good deal considering budget builds bought for five pounds, but in the current market, like where I'm at, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty decent deal, so uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go and get on with the actual specs of the PC, alright? Some of you already know what graphics card it is, though, from the hints that I've given you. Alright, so, this HP Elite Desk 800G3 SFF, which is the PC that I found, originally came with 16GB of DDR4 2133MHz dual channel RAM, which, obviously, it's still a decent amount, so I kept it. CPU-wise, it has an Intel Core i5 6500, which is running at 3.2GHz with 4 cores and 4 threads, so no hyperthreading, which is kind of sad. It's also, it's also the same CPU that Weatherman use, actually. Storage-wise, we have a 256GB M.2 NVMe SSD, which is I actually bought, which is running at PCIe Gen 3, and it also originally came with a 500GB SATA 3 hard drive, so yeah, I'm not sure about you, but hard drives aren't very great in 2025. GPU-wise, we have the AMD Radeon R7 450 4GB, which, yeah, is a pretty decent deal at 30 bucks in the area where I'm from. And also, other notes, um, the CPU boost frequency is at 3.6 GHz, alright? I mean, I, I'm not sure if it even boosted that, boosted that, high, that high, to be honest, because, yeah, this PSU is kind of weak. So, but let's go ahead and see how well it performs in the general usage benchmarks. Alright, so let's go and talk about the problems and also the features of this PC, alright? So, some problems. First off, even though it's an 80 plus bronze power supply up here, it's 180 watts total. I'm pretty sure it says it right there. It's very difficult to read, but it says it cannot exceed 180 watts, alright? So, which is why I had to go with a low profile, no, um, uh, no external power connector GPU, because I mean, literally this has a small power supply budget, alright? Power budget, alright? So, yeah. Anyways, in terms of features, this comes with a pretty spiffy DVD reader. Yeah, anyway, so, let's go and get on with the rest of the video, shall we? Alright, so, unfortunately, I do have some bad news. The general usage benchmarks, uh, the footage for it, um, sort of got lost and, or possibly corrupted, because I cannot seem to find it anymore. But anyways, I can tell you right now, because I literally just recorded it, um, about a few hours ago, I think. So, yeah, I can tell you right now that I can play 4K 60fps video perfectly fine, alright? And also, t um, uh, 8K 60fps will struggle, and also will struggle with 8K 30fps. If you want to see exactly how well it performed, and for, you know, a point of reference, you should see the, the collab video with me and Weatherman, as his PC uses the exact same processor, alright? So, yeah, anyways, let's go and get on with the gaming benchmarks, alright? Now that we know the general usage is perfectly fine on this... $50 small form factor gaming system, alright? Well, I mean, gaming is a bit of a stretch, but you'll go and see how well it performs in the benchmarks. Starting off in the deep end here, we have Beam&G Drive running pretty darn well on this PC. At 720p low with the low options selected on Grimat V2, we saw averages of 62 FPS with 1% lows down to 45, which was due to the CPU spiking a bit from loading in the new textures. The LED was turned down a little bit. More intensive maps and or vehicles could drop the FPS. You could also drop to the lowest settings if you wanted a solid 1080p 60fps experience, or you could keep the low settings at, at 1080p but play at 30fps instead. You, there's options here. I prefer shadows and 60fps over 1080p if you ask me, because the lowest settings don't actually have shadows, which is kind of strange. Overall though, BMG is very playable and is a huge success on this $50 PC. Like, I mean, I did not expect this to even, like, 
get, be able to play at 720p lowest settings, let alone get 60 FPS at low, which is a whole step up, alright, so yeah. Anyways, on to the next benchmark. Next up, with a new benchmark here, we have Counter-Strike 2 running at 720p with the low settings selected. This was done not in the community benchmark, but rather in Dust 2, as it is more representative of the actual experience. The benchmark is much more demanding and doesn't really make too much sense. The CPU was starting to hold the little R7450 back, but overall the system managed an average FPS of 63 and 1% lows down to 51, which was pretty smooth if you ask me. It isn't a competitive experience, but for the casual gamer, perfectly acceptable. There were a few initial stutters due to the hard drive the game was stored on, but after a minute, they all disappeared. Overall, CS2, aka Counter-Strike 2 if you didn't know, is very playable on this PC, but isn't quite competitive yet. You, have to have, you should have at least 120 FP, FPS on average to be competitive. On to the next benchmark. A brand new famous indie title here. We have Hall Knight Silksong running at 1080p with the max settings, and the game is very playable. This is expected though, as the game will run on even an Intel HD 4000 pretty well. I also have to point out that the GPU utilization, the frequency, and the temperature sensor are completely off. Okay, like, ridiculously off, so just ignore them, alright? Silk Song at these settings is achieving a solid 134 FPS on average, which is pretty darn good, with 1% lows down to 97. These results mean that the game is very playable and pretty darn smooth. But that is expected, as this is a mostly 2D game with some 3D elements, even though it is very fun. Overall, Hollow Knight Silk Song is very playable on this $50 PC, and that means that there is still hope for optimized 2025 games, so yeah. On to the next benchmark. Another new benchmark here, man, we have a lot of them today. We have Doom Eternal, which is a game that I rarely can even dream of testing on this channel, as the PCs I test here normally won't even start it. We have Doom Eternal, as the Dark Ages wouldn't even start on our GCN 1.0 GPU, as it doesn't have ray tracing. But still, Doom Eternal is pretty awesome. The game is running at 720p with the low settings selected, like a lot of the other games, like BeamNG and Counter-Strike. At these settings, the game is achieving a solid average of 34 FPS with 1% lows down to 25. This is the first game where we may have to either drop the resolution or enable upscaling to get anywhere near a 60 FPS average. However, if you are okay with the 30 FPS average on Doom Eternal, the game is not stuttery thanks to our 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Overall, Doom Eternal is barely a pass, but that is expected as it is a high-end game from 2020. On to the next benchmark. Next up, we have Skyrim Special Edition running at 720p with the medium settings selected, and the game is running alright. At these settings, the game is achieving a decent playable average of 31 FPS and 1% down to 26. It is a 30 FPS experience unless you drop to low settings, but I do prefer the higher visual fidelity over the slightly higher FPS. This experience is very similar to the original Skyrim on the PS3, which is kind of hilarious. Overall, Skyrim is decently playable on this hyper-budget PC, which... It's pretty good. Crisis here, which is a game that represents how older AAA titles will work on the system, and they work just fine. At 1080p with the high settings selected, we saw a playable but not ideal average of 31 FPS with 1% down to 25. For a shooter, you do want at least 50, maybe 60 FPS. You could either drop the resolution down to 720p or the settings from high to medium to achieve said result, but either way, the game is very playable on this, on this $50 small PC. And what, I mean, and what I mean by said result, I mean by the theoretical 50 to 60 FPS mode. So yeah, decently playable on this PC. Not great, but definitely usable. Next up, we have the game that came before Skyrim in the series. Oblivion here, running at 1080p with the max settings, and the game is running really, really well. At these settings, which make the game look great for its age, it achieved a solid average of 142 FPS and 1% lows down to 113. Although it is a game from 2006, which means that these results were expected, and if it got anything less than this, I would be kind of disappointed. Towns and cities could drop the frame rate to below 100 FPS, but overall, Oblivion is very, very playable in the system, alright, and runs really, really well. I, I said that twice, I'm pretty sure, so yeah. Anyways, on to the next benchmark. Another game that is CPU intensive here, we have Minecraft with the Silders Light Shaders, which look great and run pretty well. At 1080p with the fancy settings enabled and 8 chunks variants, the game ran really well, getting average frame rates of 43 FPS with the shaders, and without the shaders, which I will be showing in a second, or it's already been shown, I'm not sure, getting an average of 188 FPS with 1% lows down to 48. 
Shaders are a bit too intense if you want a 60 FPS experience, but without shaders you could see frame rates well in excess of 200 FPS, which is pretty nice. The CPU was causing those 1% loads to be poor, but overall, Minecraft runs great on this $50 PC. And yeah, that's pretty awesome. On to the last benchmark. Last up, we have Wreckfest, which is running at 720p with the medium settings selected. At these respectable settings, the game is averaging a decent 48 FPS with 1% loads down to 34. For a racing game, this is very playable. And if you wanted a 1080p experience, you could turn the settings down to low and still see a similar frame rate. On the other hand, however, if you wanted a 60 plus FPS experience, you can run the game at 720p with the low settings enabled and see it. Overall, Wreckfest is very playable on this PC, and this concludes the benchmarks. On to the conclusion of the video. Alright, so overall, how did this $50 PC perform? Well, it performed alright. For 2025, it can still play most games you know, in 720p. I forget to Although there was a big issue, you might have noticed that GTA 5 Enhanced wasn't in benchmarks. Um, well, so yeah, if you do hear this clip, this um, just make sure to leave a comment down saying Rectex that I forgot to mute it, because, yeah. As the GCM 1.0 architecture, which it, this GPU is based on, it only supports up to DirectX 11.1, not DirectX 12. Uh, uh, which damn, means this that thing is GTA actually much more heavier than you think. Um, natively, without some patches, which, if you... If you get working, it could run all right, but yeah, and also the legacy version, I just couldn't download in time, so yeah, I do apologize right. for that. Maybe in a future and video, we will take a look at it, but yeah, overall, this Oof, PC did really well, and for 50 decent. bucks I spent, it's pretty decent, all right? Anyway, see you guys in the next video, all right, which hopefully it will be a gaming video, all right, as I'm trying to revive that channel, thanks to um, a, a Discorder. But anyways, guys, see you next video, all right, and remember to subscribe. Yes.